is our guest ready this morning. <laughs> Kevin Kahn, excuse me. Yep, I am here. Hi, Adam. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Kahn joins us this morning on Adam versus the Man. He's a Libertarian Party candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives to represent the first district in Ohio. So, you know, we got to meet at the convention in Kentucky. It was great to see that you were there. And, uh, you know, the issue of veteran suicide, as I brought up, is now uh, an, an important part of your campaign. Kevin, before we get to that specifically, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running, please. Sure. Um, thanks, Adam. And nice to be here. Uh, I am a, a small business owner and entrepreneur. Uh, I specialize in exporting made in the USA industrial equipment uh, overseas. Uh, it's uh, I love that business. I've been doing it for a quarter of, of a century, supporting local manufacturing. I, I represent about eight different uh, manufacturers in my work, uh, four here in Ohio and four outside. Um, and uh, you know, for, for, for most of my life, I've been known as, you know, a road warrior where I've been gone. Uh, I'm married to an immigrant. My wife is from Mongolia. Uh, I have two kids. One was born here. One was born there. And uh, in the summertime, when the kids are out of school, we kind of decamp back to Mongolia so my wife can spend time with her family. And most of my business is in Asia, so I can use that as a base and travel out from there to where I need to go. And uh, this uh, past summer coming back, we kind of had a negative interaction with the federal government, if you can believe that. Talking. Uh, yeah. Coming back through uh, customs and immigration, my, as, as I mentioned, my, my daughter, who was one and a half at the time, was born in Mongolia. She carries two passports. And uh, as we travel around, uh, sometimes we uh, use her U.S. passport. Sometimes we use her Mongolian passport. Uh, Mongolia, it, was ne it wasn't part of the Soviet Union, but it was administered by the Soviets. So there are some countries where a Mongolian passport doesn't need a visa, others where a U.S. passport doesn't need a visa. And as we were uh, coming back through the uh, customs and immigration, we kind of were getting challenged on why we did that. And, um, you know, after a 24-hour trip, you'd like to get back and they say, hey, Count family, welcome back to the U.S., is uh, San Francisco your final, you live here, your final destination? No, we're in Cincinnati. Great. Have a safe trip home. But uh, that's not what happened. And we wound up in secondary security and, you know, armed ice guards and trying to explain. We travel with uh, the marriage certificate and the birth certificate and the U.S., you know, everything. All our, our documentation was in order. And I'm, I'm thinking, as we're having this discussion, that these folks actually think that they have the authority to take my daughter away from me. Um, you know, it wasn't too long before that we were seeing the uh, news about what was going on in the southern border and kids being separated. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's it scared the crap out of me. Um, I had not been a political activist, but I, I, I've been, you know, a libertarian supporter, follower. Uh, I, I had gone to, when I'm in town, the uh, the monthly meetings we have in our county. But I contacted the uh, the state of Ohio Libertarian Party, and I said, "This is this is the election cycle. I'm ready to do something. Uh, let me know where you need me." And uh, about a month later, they said, "Look, uh, we'd really like you to run for for Congress uh, in Ohio. You get to register your party affiliation by the uh, the ballot that you pull in the party primary. And if there's no Libertarian running in your area, you have no opportunity." To Opportunity to run for it, so um, the uh, the U.S. congressional district was the the biggest possible uh, um, geography that I could cover to let local libertarians reg register if they wanted to. You know, I didn't know that you had this background when I met you or when we scheduled this interview, but I'm really grateful for this opportunity to get your perspective now on the global coronaphobia crisis and, and how that's affecting your family and your business. I didn't yeah, expect well, you to go back to last, like when you first, I didn't expect you to go back to last summer. I was like, wait, that's pre-corona. You're having, oh, well, yeah, it's not like the government was all perfect and, and hunky-dory back then, but now yeah. in particular. So, you know, I, I guess I have a different perspective. I've, I've spent a lot of time in Asia and, and, you know, before I jumped on, I, I, I heard, um, you know, talking about the mask, the mask wearing. And I'm, I kind of get 
mask wearing because they do it there a lot for pollution. Um, the, the coronavirus hasn't affected my business tremendously because the economies did not shut down over there. Um, they handled their response a lot better than we have here. We have, we have absolutely flubbed it. And uh, so my business goes on. Um, it's kind of interesting because I haven't been able to go see employees and, and my offices overseas for, you know, nine, 10 months already. Um, and that, that's kind of a challenge, but, uh, you know, it has given me an opportunity to actually focus quite a bit of time and resources on my campaign, which is, which is fantastic. I'm in a, a district which, um, you know, as, as a lot of districts nationwide, heavily gerrymandered, should be a shoe in for a Republican win, but it's not. It's a toss up. Nobody's taking polls with my name on it, but, um, you know, from the from the uh, anecdotal evidence, I think I'm 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 in double digits, and I, I you know I think there's a an achievable win here. There's a path to victory. So uh, I've been very heavily focused on, on social media and and you know getting outside when I can to meet people. Yeah. Yeah. So how is Corona affecting the campaign? Are there still events? Are people willing to go out and and meet and shake hands? Uh, I think the people who are interested in the in the message of liberty are, are interested to go out and shake hands. Um, I've done um, quite a bit of, of visiting during the uh, call it the BLM protests or you know, here the here the group that's running it is called Cincinnati for Racial Justice. Um, and, you know, have, we're putting together crowds of, of four or five thousand people um, and we were having some of those all over the place. And th those are. Those are uh, our folks who want to hear about ending qualified immunity and things in, in, a, in a libertarian criminal justice reform sense that, that meets some of you know, their goals that they're looking for. So uh, I've been able to do that. And uh, we've just started putting together you know, the, the local meet and greets. We started our canvassing operations. People are going door to door, door knocking. We have door hangers. And, uh, and we're showing up at, at pubs and taverns on the weekend, letting people know if you have any questions, uh, come meet us at socially distance. We can put, you know, 10, 20 people together and, and, and just talk about stuff. So we're, we're, that's how we're, we've been being active. Yeah. So veteran suicides with everything else going on, people still care, still relevant. We're going to make them care. We're going to make them care. Um, the uh, it it is something that is not getting as much focus as it should. And you know, when I went down to Kentucky, um, I, I really didn't have any expectations of the information and the feelings that I was going to receive. Uh, we we actually this past weekend we just had our Ohio convention. We have it scheduled after everything's done. So Kentucky was an opportunity for me to go hear candidates live for the first time. And I'm, I'm grateful that, that uh, you know, I took the opportunity because I got to hear you speak. I, and I, I had no idea that that was such an issue. And it ties into so many things that we talk about in our campaign, whether it's ending the war, whether it's, it's really not a good idea to look at a healthcare system run exclusively by the government, because we have a track record to show that they're not good at it. Um, and, and, and veteran suicide is something that this should be a slam dunk we need to be taken care of. Uh, and, it's, and it's very easily taken care of by the government. If there was the correct focus, why the hell isn't there that focus? Um, so yeah, I, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a message that I put out there when appropriate, when I can, when I know I have an audience that 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 that'll soak it in because everybody needs to know. Um, we can't just keep well, going you know, forward the way we've been going forward. Kevin, I, I hadn't even considered this before just now, but having made this connection, I, I kind of want to see if you have any other you know, anecdotal experience with this. But you know, as a veteran myself, uh, you know, I, and I, I ran a peer support group for veterans with PTSD called Homefront Battle Buddies when I was active with Iraq Veterans Against the War, knowing that suicides are uh, uh, skyrocketing right now because of the lockdowns and shutdowns and all the, the stressors, whether it's isolation or financial anxiety or other conflicts, whatever 
that goes along with that, obviously exacerbating suicide. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to see statistics anytime soon, but I would bet money that that problem is particularly exacerbated in the veterans community right now. And I say this a little bit from personal experience. I don't go to the VA for any kind of mental health treatment, but I do go to the VA for some uh, management of my allergies and mm-hmm. you know other chronic injury issues that I have related to my service with the VA. And I went to the VA once a couple months ago and just the process of even getting in through the coronavirus screening was was absolutely nuts. And there are a lot of uh, support groups that aren't meeting anymore, people that don't have access to that healthcare. Um, I, I wonder if, if, if we're going to see uh, a radical increase in veteran suicides as a result of the shutdowns limiting access to, uh, to peer support groups and other mental health treatment. Do you have any anything in your district or anything you've experienced uh, relevant to that, Kevin? Um, well, the, the I, I would say the closest thing I have through through the campaign, one of the the goals was uh, you know to support the libertarian grassroots effort. We we formed the official Hamilton County Libertarian Party, and uh, and we've been growing. and And one of our newest members is is a someone who wants to be an activist, possibly a, a future um, political uh, candidate. And he's also a veteran, and I, and I and I've talked with him about this, and 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 going to the American legions, and going to the to the uh, you know the the different activities where veterans normally get get together, and 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 how can we bring the message to them that we want to make this important, and 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 get resources available, um, because I'm sure after talking with you and after talking with him. This is on the minds of of a lot of people, and and the last time I had posted about this, I think was earlier this month after uh, the last day of, of the July Fourth weekend. I guess July Fourth was a Saturday. I had been in a, a couple parades on the third and the fourth and the fifth. I'm thinking, you know, here we are celebrating patriotism, and on the fifth, I, I put out a hey, you know, we we need to if we want to be patriotic, let's bring the soldiers home from. Afghanistan and Iraq now. Um, uh, with my work and my travel, uh, I would say my hobby or what I spent uh, free time on locally uh, was coaching ice hockey. I have a, uh, my son is, is turning 18 shortly and, uh, you know, thinking about what college he went to. And, and I, so I've got a network of, you know, hundreds of, of athletes, ice hockey athletes, who are in the 17, 18, and, and 19 range. I coached for about seven years. And, and I think to myself, and I think about my son, and I've got nieces and nephews, similar age. You know, if, if any of them came to me and said, you know, Kevin or Coach Connor or, or whatever, I'm thinking about deferring college. I'm feeling patriotic. I want to go into the military for two years. What, what would I need to accomplish um, while I'm there, the two years, to make it a successful deployment and feel proud about what I did. And, and really, other than don't get killed, come back intact, I don't know what else we're, we're gonna be doing there for the next two years that warrants us sending our young men and women overseas. So let's just, you know, pack up. Yeah, that's exactly why. Not, I know 90% of incumbent Congress people, both sides of the aisle, get defense donations. That's that's exactly it. Um, so let's pack up, deploy out of the war zones. I mean, you know, there's it with, within libertarianism, there's all, you know, with every, every party, there's a spectrum. And, and I would say I'm a, maybe a little more on the hawkish. I kind of think that there, there's room for, for uh, NATO or room for us to be allies with people, but that doesn't mean we have to have troops stationed everywhere. Let's, Get, you know, we're, we're not going to do anything more in Afghanistan and Iraq. We've got troops in freaking Bahrain, Turkey, Qatar, UAE. I mean, we've got, we're there in presence and in a higher presence that we need to be. Get the, get the kids out of the war zone and the adults out of the war zone um, and, uh, and, 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 and get on with it, you know. So, so 
Um, yeah, that so was I a good the... Freudian slip there, Kevin. As, as, as many adults as there are in war, it is an extremely childish endeavor. Yeah. So, so on you know, July 5th, I said, well, you know, I, I know that this is something we need to talk about. So after I posted all my, you know, here I am at the parades trying to introduce myself to people. July 5th, it's a long weekend. It's a holiday weekend. There are going to be some lonely veterans out there. Go check in on your buddies. You know, we've lost 6,000 soldiers in 20 years in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. Maybe it's eight, somewhere in there. But, you know, in this, in, call it seven. We've lost close to 80,000 veterans in suicides over that same time, which is ridiculous. It's absolutely a failure on the part of our government and our system. So um, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing that message and... and and see how I can get it to take hold. Hopefully with, with the uh, veteran friends I'm making in the local Libertarian Party as they join in, we'll, we'll figure out a way to, to, to push this locally. Well, thank you very much, Kevin, for raising this issue and for that powerful perspective that every American should have on this issue. Your website is conforcongress.com. That's K-A-H-N, the number four, congress.com. You can find him on Facebook, Con for Congress, or on Twitter at Con for the number four C. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. Any last Thanks thoughts? Thanks for having or me, Adam. Any, Anything else that people uh, should know uh, about getting in contact with you or helping you out I, in your I, race? I, I think you covered it, and I hope I hope that in addition to libertarians who watch your show, you have non-libertarians who watch your show, and 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 you know it is time to make a change. And, and we are a viable option. So thank you. Thank you. Well, at very least, Kevin, I know there are trolls watching the show who are not libertarian. <laughs> and for all of you who don't understand the support, the, the importance of this, uh, this issue in this race, Kevin, you know, again, thank you so much for raising these issues and, and for joining us today. Okay. Take care, Adam. Nice to see you.